If you're using strainers to make green tea, you're missing out on a lot of flavor. In this episode, we're going to talk about why it's better to use a teapot to prepare your tea rather than a strainer. We will also conduct a quick experiment to show you what this looks like in action. If you're new to the channel, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but today we're going to focus on tea strainers versus teapots. Before we get started, I think we should mention that tea strainers are not completely terrible for preparing loose leaf tea. These work far better than tea bags and can be a good way to get started in the world of loose leaf tea. I'll even bring a strainer with me while I travel so I don't have to worry about my precious clay teapot breaking. There is a reason, however, why teapots are a better tool for preparing Japanese green tea and it comes down to space. After the tea leaves are harvested, they are steamed and then they go through a long drying process. While the leaves are still pliable, they are rolled into these tight needle shapes and then dried for a final time. This is done to lock in the flavors of the tea leaf so that they are only released when the tea is infused into hot water. Once the leaves are rehydrated, they will slowly expand and release their flavor into the infusion. If properly infused, these tight needle-shaped leaves will expand to many times their original size. This expansion of the tea leaves requires space, and that's where the teapot comes in. The wide base of the teapot allows room for the leaves, and that's the main reason why tea prepared in a teapot is so much richer in flavor. When you prepare leaves in a tea bag or a strainer, you stop the leaves from expanding, and therefore they aren't able to fully release their flavor into the water. You will still get some flavor when you use these methods, but a lot of it stays trapped inside the leaves. If you have a few tea strainers at home, try and use the one that gives the most space. Instead of thinking about all strainers being bad and all teapots being good, think of it as a spectrum from tea bags to cramped small strainers to larger cylindrical strainers and finally to teapots. Many teapots have basket strainers inside of them and these should be avoided. To demonstrate this concept, let's test out two methods side by side. For this, we are going to use a gyokuro tea. Gyokuro is the most sought after leaf tea in Japan. If brewed right, it produces a powerful, sweet, and savory flavor. Gyokuro also goes through a second rolling step, which makes the leaves even more tightly packed together. This makes it the perfect tea to experiment on. Let's try it out. So to get started, I have two plates with five grams of leaves. I have a teapot and I have a strainer. So first what I'm gonna do is prepare the teapot and then later I'll prepare the strainer. So just kind of set this up here. And then what I'm going to do is fill up these glasses with some hot water. Uh, I'm using 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm trying to keep the water temperature the same and the amount of water the same so I can have a good um, controlled experiment here. Just add a little bit more water here. And then um, what I'm first going to do is just put the strainer in and then put the leaves in um, because then I'm going to prepare the teapot and brew it right away. Uh, so open up the teapot, pour in the full amount of water. So I have the same amount of water brewing in the strainer as well as the teapot. Just close it up. And then here I'm going to uh, wait for approximately two minutes, which is the steeping time for this tea. I'm, I'm using the Gyokuro Sasahime for this. Um, if you look carefully at the strainer, you can see that there's some infusion happening. Uh, but not a whole lot. The, the water uh, is not going to change color in a meaningful way for the next two minutes. So it's been about a minute, but I'm just going to take a little peek at how the infusion's working. As you can see here, when you look carefully at the strainer, um, the leaves are really cramped inside here. They are really confined to this kind of uh, circular uh, piece of space there, um, whereas with the teapot, they have a lot more space. You can even see the leaves moving, even though we're not speeding this up at all. You can see the, le the leaves moving inside the teapot. Um, so when you compare the two, obviously you get much more space with the teapot, um, whereas with the strainer you have much less space, so there's not a proper infusion happening. The leaves are really confined. They're not able to uh, properly infuse into the water. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take this out, just let some of the, the tea water filter through and then place that and you can see it's still the leaves barely moved because they're so crammed in there and you have a very light infusion here um, when you see when I compare it with the teapot you'll see that it's very light um, so first it's going to appear to be very clear because I'm pouring out kind of the weakest part of the tea first um, but you see as I pour out later on um, the color instantly changes to this kind of very cloudy. This is what you want with a gyokuro. You want it to be very cloudy because that shows that it has a lot of sweetness to it and a lot of flavor. So when we just look at these two, uh, you can see the, the one brewed with the teapot is very cloudy. There's some particulates in it, um, whereas the other one brewed with a strainer is very clear, almost see-through. Um, so you can see that 
there wasn't a whole lot of flavor kind of imparted into the infusion, you can see. When I take a piece of paper and put it behind them, you can see that there's actually a lot more particulates in the, um, the one brewed with the teapot. This is actually a good thing. It may not look quite as appealing, uh, but this is going to make the tea richer and more flavorful over time. And you can see at the top, there's like this little layer of essential oil layer. You can tell that there's a lot of complexity in this tea. The flavor of the gyokuro brewed inside the teapot is going to have much more strength and complexity to it. If you really want to get serious about Japanese green tea, we recommend investing in a Kyusu teapot. You can get one for free when you sign up for our monthly tea club. The monthly tea club is a great way to save on premium Japanese green tea every month, and you'll also get your very own clay tokonami Kyusu to prepare the teas in. You can sign up today and cancel any time. If you aren't quite ready to get the teapot, there are a few things you can try. The first is to move the strainer through the water a little bit. This will definitely produce more flavor, but it's a fine line because if you agitate the leaves too much, it will release some of the bitterness. Another thing you can do is brew the tea leaves in a French press. This gives them plenty of space to unfurl while also filtering them out automatically when you pour. Just make sure that you don't push the leaves down with the plunger or you will release some of the bitterness. Finally, you can brew the leaves inside a regular glass and then pour them out through a filter later. The two important things are to give the leaves enough space to expand and then filter them out when you're ready so that they stop brewing. The teapot accomplishes both of these and that's one of the reasons why we like it so much. Thank you all so much for watching this video. We hope you found it helpful. If you get a chance, try out this experiment and see if you notice a difference in flavor. Once you get a taste of the richer, more complex taste profiles from teas brewed in teapots, it will be tough to go back to the strainer. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.